Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third edition of the podcast with no name. It's been three episodes and I still can't figure out a name <laughs> for this shit yet. <laughs> I have, we have some names in the running and the name will be chosen tomorrow. I'm filming this on the same day as the Alex Frost podcast. But joining me today for the third episode is a legend in the rec room wrestling community. Somebody whose name has been all around and it's been highly requested for this show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Stein Time. Thanks for having me, man. I'm happy to be on the third episode of the Unnamed Podcast. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm just, I'm great, grateful to be here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I guess we'll start with Rec Room Wrestling because, again, most of, of, that's what most of these a holes tune into. <laughs> yeah, it's should yeah. Be, it should be calling them a holes. They they're still <laughs> they're still audience members, you know. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of questions going around for Rec Room Wrestling, but. Uh, Mm -hmm. I guess the main one that's on my mind to start things out is about your return. Okay. There was a, there was a decision that you had to make to Mm -hmm. make your return as so, so some people don't know that you were, were also a reviewer like me at one point you had my job. You were my successor (laughs) (laughs) for like two weeks (laughs) for like, for like a month and a half. (laughs) And now here we are again, where I'm back in the same role. Oh, my bad. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. I, don't, I, I, play, I blame you for my sorrow. <laughs> With being the reviewer, you had the choice to come back to wrestling. You told me your reasoning why, which I won't get into here. I figured it's yeah, no, you're good. more personal, but like, you yeah. had your reasoning, and then you eventually came back to rec room wrestling. Yeah. So, so far, in your second run, how do you think things are going for you? Well, uh, like back in my, uh, when you spoke for me at my Hall of Fame speech, when you said I was uh, born with a silver spoon in my mouth, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, That is no longer the treatment. Uh, Coming back from retirement, uh, you know, people always remember me as the world title competitor in every single company, yada, yada, yada. Um, And that's no longer the case, but I wouldn't quite say I dislike it, though. Mm -hmm. um it's nice not getting so much handed to you like it shows that you actually have like i understand that i worked to be in the position that i was at before but it's it just feels nice kind of getting a fresh start especially uh trying out a heel character now possibly um so it's uh it's definitely interesting right now but i'm still having a good time doing this yeah, and it, it feels like that you're gonna you have a long way to go with this new character. Yeah, there's so much more that you can explore with this character. And uh, tell me a little bit more about this heel character that you got going on. So this was planned by the mastermind on microphone himself. Um, of course, <laughs> we, we've had this uh, heel discussion because obviously. I think there's not much of an argument of who's the greatest face of all time. And therefore, changing one of the greatest faces ever into a heel, obviously, is a pretty big deal. Um, So, Rocker came up with the idea. It was actually supposed to happen, I would say, about a couple weeks before DBCW uh, died. Um, But the whole retirement thing happened, and it got canceled, and we thought it was never going to happen again. I came back... And basically what this heel character is about is more of like a, instead of like being like your typical bad guy, it's more like a mental thing. And what I mean by that is it's going (laughs) to, yeah, pretty much. Uh, I'm going to be pulling up in like a wheelchair and shit, but uh, it involves Dawson. And obviously, as you can tell, because that's where the heel turn happened at the pay-per-view. So basically what it's going to be about is I'm going to go feud with Dawson and I'm going to try to still act like the good guy so basically he's going to be like slowly mentally turning into the heel so it's not just going to go straight into being the bad guy um Mm. yeah I know a lot of the plans I'm trying not to spoil it right now like you know like (laughs) like a new Marvel movie's coming out you know like one of the actors like accidentally spoils something (laughs) yeah yeah, I know. I know. Rockers like watching this podcast right now, like saying like this little shit better not spoil anything. Like the Jordan but, Peele sweating meme. <laughs> but basically, all I can say is that it's gonna be a slow lead up, 
to, in my opinion, probably the greatest feud I ever had in my career. What are you hoping to gain out of this feud? So you know some of the personal reasons why I retired. But mm -hmm. another reason was just because it kind of got a bit boring. It, it didn't become as funny more doing the same gimmick over and over. So I'm kind of enjoying the experience of changing characters. You know, like I understand I'm, not a lot of people get a chance to do this so late into their career. So I'm definitely going to take advantage of it. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely you a chance to reinvent yourself. And yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. it's like you mentioned, it's like a fresh start. Yeah. No, I know. I know you feel like, cause with rec from wrestling now, I'm so fucking bored with, <laughs> I am so <laughs> bored watching this yeah. shit. I'm, I'm so glad that I'm going to be done with this soon. I like, mm -hmm. I'm happy that I met all you guys because you guys have done a lot, not only for just for me, but you've given me a lot of fun moments. Yeah. But like at this moment in time, I'm just, oh, it's so, like, it's so tedious. And that kind of leads me into like that newest five star match because for the first time in like months, I didn't mm -hmm. feel like I was bored anymore. <laughs> I like, I felt like I was back to where I was maybe a year or so ago where this was fun. That match like yeah. kind of brought me back into everything. And that's, that's the reason why it got that five stars because it made me finally feel like, this is entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually hope for record wrestling. <laughs> yeah, like it, it gave me, and like that, oh, that fucking kid in the front row too. That was so funny. <laughs> yeah, it's on, so Ruby, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten to a point where like that character that I had with the suit and the mohawk and the glasses and the beard, I feel mm -hmm. like I do kind of want to bring him back. I, I mentioned this to Alex when we did ours earlier, but. Like that character is like so memorable to some people that I can't. yeah it's iconic yeah I like, I can bring it back at any time and I I won't lie there is and I feel like you're not the only person feeling this because I'm feeling it too it just feels like rec room wrestling is just not as explosive as it used to be you know it's not really bringing it like the stands are still packed people are still coming to watch it it just seems like something's off about it and I'm not quite sure what it is yet but it it's slowly building back up and yeah that's it's a bit different right now but i think it'll get back to how it was before there's a couple people like have you heard about this uh rec room wrestling con thing oh yeah going around that was that's something that really got like brought up my curiosity i saw this and i was like this is something that's never been done before <laughs> yeah no i think it's gonna be really interesting i got my uh stein time uh meet and greet thing there you have a stein time meet and greet right <laughs> i think i filled out that form i filled it out for a uh like a podcast episode like mm, oh that'd be cool do like if i'm available maybe do a live podcast episode on record yeah. instead yeah that'd be cool i wish i could dig it to wrestle at one point but that that time's long gone. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't need another like twenty two year old wrestling like oh good old Riptide back in the day. Yeah, I don't want to end up like that. Is there a point where you're gonna sit down and wonder about that? Where you get to oh, I already have trust when I turned because my birthday was on the twenty second, so I'm nineteen now. There was times when I even thought about when I was still seventeen, um, because I'm. I just don't want to be that guy, you know? No one wants to be that guy. But it's it's just such a fun little hobby to do. Um, but obviously, there's going to be a point where I just won't be able to do this anymore. And I already told myself that I'm not doing this by the time I'm 20. No, no way. So <laughs> definitely not going to happen. Like, I, I can guarantee for a fact that I will not be here when I'm 20. Yeah, I think... So I was 19, I think, when I did, I, like, I joined Impact, so, like, with the Rec Room Wrestling side of things. Uh, I got to the point, maybe in the summer, summer last year, where I was just playing an online session again, like, a late night, I do, like, late night sessions in Rec Room, right? And yeah. where all those funny moments come from, it's usually in those sessions. So I did, oh, yeah. and I went to, like, the Rec, like, the Rec Center, 
and I just felt like so old. <laughs> so I was like, I, it kind of like dawned on me when I was there. I was like, why the hell am I still playing this? Yeah. yeah. There, I think there's going to be a point though where I'll, I'll retire from Rec Room Wrestling, but I think I'll still hop on Rec Room every now and then. Just because, I mean, I'm not going to let a fucking VR go to waste, you know? Yeah, it better be a bunch of drunk people if I'm hopping back on so I get some good content. <laughs> Gotta get my friends drunk for <laughs> two and a half hours. Requirements are at least three shots in. Get my... I got my... What is this? Sev... Sevdeka... Sevdeka? Sevdeka Vodka. <laughs> This big ass bottle of it on my desk. Hey, you know that's good shit if you can't read the name. <laughs> it's Russian. It's it's Russian. It's Russian. Something Russian. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. I think the story behind this bottle is like my girlfriend's mom was like delivering something from Walmart. She was delivering to this house. It was like this rich neighborhood house that has like the gate and everything. Mm -hmm. And they just didn't want the order anymore. Like they just flat out canceled the order. Free. We, God knows how much that fucking bottle cost. Yeah, like you don't. I don't know how much the groceries was, but like, her mom took it back, and then so she brought it over here, and now it's been on my desk for a couple months. <laughs> Shit. There's a little bit. It's a. It's not a. It's not a small bottle either. It's like you know how like big a Gatorade bottle is, like one of those water bottles. Yeah. It's bigger than that. Like it towers over. Oh, that. Fuck. We just confirmed that I'm 19, therefore uh, I cannot legally drink, and therefore I will not drink. And for the record, Stime Time never has. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and for the record, I never have either, okay? I don't want my... Um, I heard it, uh, since I'm a young man, it uh, disrupts my development. I don't think that's the only thing that's going to disrupt your development. <laughs> All that rec room wrestling is going to take All a toll on you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna have serious arthritis when I'm older. You know how, like, in WWE, they have those, like, do not try this at home videos? You're gonna be on the cover of one of those. <laughs> I tore my knee six times! <laughs> oh, just, like, a picture of me, like, in a wheelchair, like, holding the thumbs up. I broke my dick bone 25 places. <laughs> <laughs> I ran to the TV more times than you can count. I tried to do a backflip once. <laughs> No, that shit's fine. <laughs> that shit's fun. I'm still thinking about that. But back to back to Rec Room Wrestling. Oh yeah, of course. In your first run, there was a lot of talk about how you deserved more five stars. And I just wanted to I kinda wanna get your opinion on it because I've, I've we've had this conversation maybe once or twice, but Yeah. Whenever I ask I don't really ask people off the five star thing because to me it's just it's just there for you guys. Yeah. Just, to me, it's like a fun thing, but what what is your opinion on that five star rating system? Like, are you asking like, what's my like? Do you think every match that you've rated for me like that? I thought like, do you think that your ratings are accurate? Like, is that what you're asking me? No, it could be like, well, what do you think of the rating system in general? Like, do you think it's like a helpful thing, a harmful thing? Is it like a good measure? Is it fun? Like. Yeah, okay. Cause, because you have a unique perspective compared to other people. Like you you have actually done this as well. So you, yeah. you know what I am talking about when I talk about the reviews. Yeah. It's um first of all, I just gotta add that I give you a shit ton of respect for doing this for such a long time because I did it for a month or two and I hated every second of it. <laughs> so um, not so easy now, is it? Yeah, it's not easy. Uh huge props to you okay uh mad respect but um here's my opinion on the five star rating and honestly i think everybody has their own little opinion in a way about this but mm -hmm. my perspective is i think it's meant to be a good thing but some people might not take it that way and what i mean by that is rec room wrestling was just simpler before all the five star matches were like a must need and it's not even you turning into that it's the community turning it into that so it's nothing on you at all right. um it's to the point now where i mean arguments and fucking discussions and, and all that good stuff just 
happen out of five star matches. Like I'm sick of people wanting to be the best, like the greatest of all time. You know, like it's to the like I never cared. About, I didn't even know that I was in the goat conversation till like three or four months before I retired. Um, I think, yeah, I think when that started was like so you already had you already no you didn't have the five star yet. You won the mm-hmm. Black Diamond World Title for the second time. Yep. And I think you unified the titles with the WRW one at that time. Yes. I think that's when the conversation started. I, I think it is too. Um, I know there was like little talk because before that it was Ruby. Like no question about it. Um, but I remember it all kind of started. I would say around when like underground wrestling was at its peak and I won the world title there that's when i started hearing like little talks about hey this guy might be better all that and honestly i didn't really let that bother me because i just want people to realize that in the grand scheme of things nobody's gonna give a fuck on your job application if you have a five-star match in rec room wrestling all right (laughs) nobody's gonna give a shit okay i'm gonna put it that's the lamest resume builder i've ever heard (laughs) like I'm not going to go over here on a... I'm not going to go on Tinder and be like, yeah, 18-time uh, record world wrestling champion. Um, No, it's not going to happen. So, like, I'm very grateful for the five-star matches I've gone because, you know, they're not easy to get, okay? And honestly, Shep, they're a pain in the ass to get, and sometimes I wish the worst on you, all right? Um, That's not the first time I've heard that statement. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, like... Don't get me wrong, it's a good feeling once you get a five star. Like, because you know you worked for it. It's the only thing in Rec Room Wrestling that you can actually earn. It's not scripted, it's not booked. A five star match is the only thing that you can actually earn. So it's it's a great accomplishment, but again, nobody's gonna give a fuck in ten years. You know? Yeah. That's that's definitely so, true. Nobody's nobody gives a f- <laughs> nobody's gonna give no, a shit. Yeah, I just Rec Room Wrestling became such a toxic area just due to the fact that people want to be better than others and this the fact that we don't at least i don't do it to be better than other people i do it because i didn't start taking rec room wrestling seriously until i saw this goes all the way back to dpw mm-hmm. back when it and started. yep and i remember i saw like this little kid in the stand and when i say little i mean like the kid that was at ruby and inko's match right <laughs> yeah and it was like the kid was cheering me on like i was an actual like full-on wwe professional wrestler and that's when i realized that like i do it because i'm entertaining the people you know people want to watch it all the backstage stuff and stuff that happens i don't care much for it i just because like as a heel character now my number one goal is to make all those guys tell me to go fuck myself so that's exactly what I'm going to do. But as that's a heel, a lot easier as a heel than a face. Oh yeah, yeah. Trust me, because if people don't like you off the get go, it's going to be very hard for them to start liking you. So uh, we've been doing the good guy shit for almost two years. I want so. everyone to love me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think there's like a little bit of respect that comes with that, and uh, just seeing that at the Hall of Fame too. Like I, I went to the crowd after I, like read like i gave my one minute uh, yeah bronchitis speech <laughs> <laughs> but like i could hear that from the crowd you went on for like 30 minutes though that was it, a it was long a long speech I, I had a i had a story to tell i had a dream <laughs> you did not just quote martin luther king <laughs> in a fucking youtube podcast <laughs> with rec room wrestling you've got your stars you've got your accolades <laughs> Yeah. You got your dreams for what this heel turn is going to turn into, and you've got a set date in mind for when you want to end it all. Is <laughs> is weird as that sounded right there? Uh, yeah, as fucked up as that sounds. <laughs> it seems like you got a lot figured out for it, and there, there's probably a lot more we could talk about. But I think for now we'll move on to something else. Uh, let's talk about this YouTube channel that you're running. <laughs> All right, this this YouTube channel over here, the Stein Time YouTube channel with forty four subscribers and only one so video. Many. Um, what so the hell is happening with this? <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned that because I was actually thinking about it this morning. Um, I 
I was I'm still trying to figure out an identity for the YouTube channel. You know, like I don't want it to be involved around Rec Room Wrestling, so I'm probably gonna take that post down in a little bit. I just wanted to, like I might upload shit off of my PlayStation. Like I might be playing like uh, Call of Duty or Fortnite with a couple friends or something. Maybe Rec Room one or two times or something. I don't know, but I kind of like you know. I've been watching a lot of uh, Jinxy, if you know who that is. Yeah, I've heard that name. You look at these streamers, and they're just like funny-ass people that are all right at the game, but they're still having a good time doing That's just kind of what I want. I want to be like a YouTuber that just makes people laugh while playing games with a couple of boys. Definitely uh, sober, though, because, again, reminder, I'm 19. So that's... That's kind of what I want that identity for the YouTube channel to be. Okay, this is going way back, and I don't know if you'll remember this YouTuber, but uh, do you remember a YouTuber called Sky Does Minecraft? I've heard, yeah, I've heard about Sky Does Minecraft. I didn't watch, I didn't watch a lot of Minecraft growing up. He he was the only YouTuber I watched growing up. Um, I explained a lot. <laughs> all right, fuck off. <laughs> so. I also watch Roblox streamers. <laughs> All right, chill, because that might have been partially true. Um, <laughs> I feel like a book then. <laughs> <laughs> Ro Roblox and Minecraft. I mean, it's. I would say the games I definitely grew up on, though, was definitely Lego games. I feel like any normal child should have grown up on Lego video games. I played a lot of Lego. Uh, actually, I didn't play a lot. I had, I had a couple Lego games. Mm -hmm. There was uh, Lego Indiana Jones for the oh, PlayStation top 2, uh, Lego Batman, and top then tier. some Lego Star Wars. That was really about it. I remember my first ever video game on a PlayStation was the uh, original Lego Batman game. And then... Uh, Did you... Which PlayStation? 2 or 3? Three? 3. Yeah, I'm not I'm not that old, Shep. Okay, you ancient right, Okay, Batman. all right. <laughs> <laughs> Over here playing like your PlayStation joystick. <laughs> you got one joystick and one button. My PlayStation 2 kicks ass. It can kick your All PlayStation right. 3's ass anytime. My okay, PlayStation I'm... 3 will kick your PlayStation 3's ass. <laughs> <laughs> My PlayStation 3's probably fucking somewhere in uh I don't even know where the fuck that thing's at now. I don't even know where my plate because I got P a PS5 like three two years ago. I don't even know where my PlayStation 4 went. I, I know, wait, I take that back. We gave the PlayStation 4 to uh, some neighbor kid before we moved away, which kind of scares me because there is a lot of clips on my PlayStation 4 that I do not want that little child seeing. <laughs> a lot of messed up. I need to actually, there... I'll have to go back and look at my PS4. I, I recently upgraded, so I don't. My PS4 is just sitting in another room. I gotta like, make sure to get my clothes off that. Like, if that shit gets leaked, um, my mugshot's gonna be taken the next morning. My question, what was your experience trying- Like, hang on, so when did you get your PS5? I- I got it, like, a week or so ago. I just went to Walmart. Oh, shit. So you never- Discount. Okay. <laughs> okay, so- Let me just say, the struggle of getting the PS5 when it recently came out- was probably one of the most difficult challenges I've ever faced in my life so far. What's uh what's on the chopping block for Stein? Like, what's your first idea that you got for your channel? God, the one person I definitely want to uh start off with uh, is playing uh, Call of Duty with my cousin. So my cousin's the same age as me, and he's basically just like a dumber version of me uh, in a way. Um, that's hard to come very, <laughs> I know, a uh, very, <laughs> very funny dude, and we're extremely funny, especially when we're playing games together. So, I think that would make for a great, uh, first video. Call of Duty, which one, is that Modern Warfare 3 now? Yeah. Back in my day, I was playing World at War. <laughs> <laughs> right. My first Call of Duty was until my PlayStation 4, and that was Call of Duty Ghost. That was my first PS4 one. Uh, but before that, I did. I played a lot with my dad for uh, PS3, and we did Modern Warfare 3 back then, the good one, and uh, Black oh. Ops 2. 
This is gonna sound so bad. Um, the <laughs> John Cena's entrance. You know what I'm talking about? The what? The Make a Wish one. <laughs> you can do and it, he's John. Still, he's still lost. <laughs> yeah, I think it was just for show. Like, these kids, these kids are probably in the backstage and are like, uh, "Why the fuck we come over here? <laughs> Why'd you give them that boy? They're not dumb. They're not like that. <laughs> they're sick kids. They're not mentally. <laughs> they're not mentally no, disabled you, kids. If you go back, I swear one of them was down. I'm convinced that if the fucking rapture were to happen right now, and everybody just started going, I would still be here. <laughs> <laughs> it's no doubt about it i've there, there's been some shit that i have said that is just unspeakable just the most diabolic fucking horrendous act of mankind come out of my mouth i'm not <laughs> pause <laughs> pause <laughs> okay see now you're just all right i just uh, there's just a little pause there and then it was just come out of my no. mouth <laughs> No, 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 no. See, there's no pause there because it said come out. But if it was come in, then there would be a pause. All right. I was, you know, I was hanging out with my family. Uh, my sister, she's about five years older than me, so she doesn't live at home anymore. So when she does visit, usually me and her participate in alcoholic beverages. Um, right. And so I hop on Rack Room. Because Dawson told me to get on. They're playing uh, that game. And I'm like, sure. We I join the room. We start. And I fall flat on the floor. Just full on. I'm sleeping with my headset on. Da all I hear is... Because I still have the headset on. All I hear is Dawson saying, You alright, Stime Time? In his fucking British accent. Stime Time, you alright? <laughs> Stime Time, are you alright? And it's, it, I don't even know how I remember that still, but I just remember like getting up and one of the rounds I got chosen to be the clown. Bro, I was not hitting shit. I was probably swinging at the walls and, uh, dude, that was just, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. It was to the point where they were just like running in front of me and I would just completely miss my swing. Like, uh, little, yeah, it's, it's like an old man chasing down a bunch of little kids. Wait, shit. What's your fun drinking the beverage story? Oh god, dude. There's too many to count. Um you gotta go to Okay, I got one. So this goes back with my cousin, right? So my cousin, he's in Ohio. And so I visit down there sometimes, you know. I was staying there for like three days. Uh my parents were staying, so my cousin, he's on my dad's side of the family. Mm -hmm. So my mom and my dad were staying on my mom's side of the family so I, it was just me and him and his parents and all that okay <laughs> he goes his parents have a beverage uh shelf uh at his crib so of course it was like, it was like one or two in the morning and we go upstairs and he he shows me this shelf and it's just lined up with beautiful beverages right anything mm -hmm. you name they for some reason had it and he just looks at me he goes pick your poison and i was i was like all right so we are taking these beverages and he gets a snapchat it's a uh, two of his girl buddies Ooh. i know right and he he's like he's like yo what you doing right now and he's like me and my cousin are partaking of beverages right now in my room He's so she's like, okay, uh, we're about to pick you up. We're going to the, uh, uh, remember this is Ohio. So this is, you know, like Lake Erie, you know? Yeah. They only live like 20 minutes away from Lake Erie. So we were, they were like, we're going to pick you up. We're going to go to Lake Erie. We get there. Well, okay. So this is how it worked. For some reason, my grandma and my dad's side of the family stays up to like four in the morning. I don't know how the hell she does it. She just does so she's got old lady powers mm -hmm. so there's sensors at in front of the house and it turns on these lights that are just bright as shit and will wake everybody up mm -hmm. so we had to go around the house like we had to take a huge like stretch instead of just walking straight 
it's just so we don't get caught in the sensors and keep in mind we already partaken of beverages so we were like you know giggling in the yard and shit we see their car you know parked down a while because you know you can't park in front of the house with the headlights on or else i'd be mad suspicious yeah no so, you can't just park in the you can't park in the driveway or anything reasonable no, <laughs> no that's too easy um and so we hop in the car uh girls already kind of know what's going on with us um because we're not hiding it at all and we get to lake erie and there's like this like rock path on the lake that leads like to like kind of like a i don't even know like a platform looking thing like a little bit out into the lake mm -hmm. and we get on there and we it's a long ass walk mad like and i was barefoot so it was like walking on like <sighs> that sounds awful it was awful, especially like when you're trying to balance after partaking of beverages. And we're looking to distance. We see like there's a group of people there already. So keep in mind, this is like a spot for all the teens in that area that live there. And so we get there. My cousin knows who they are. Obviously, I don't because I don't live there. And we're all talking and stuff, yada, yada, yada. And then they also had beverages as well. So, you know, they're off of that too and they're like yo and this is a high ass jump they're like does someone want to jump in the lake with me it was just the fact that i just had my beverages and i was thinking and i was like yeah. yes i would love to jump in the lake so they were recording I, I have it on video they were recording they were like three two one and i noticed because me and him were standing side by side i started running and i noticed that he wasn't running with me and so I like jumped. To dry. Yep. And so I and I feel like I was in the air for like ten whole seconds. I hit the water. I'm not swimming right. Yeah. Cause because you're, because you're on beverage. Because because I'm I part I partake for taking for taking for taking in beverage. Of course you can't swim right. <laughs> so I'm like flailing my arms around and shit. I'm. I'm trying my best to swim here because I know they can't go down to get me. So now the adrenaline's kicking. It's like, okay, if I don't swim over here, I'm dead. I've only been in probably like three near-death situations in my life. I don't know if that's normal or not. And but that's one of them. <laughs> that's one of them, yes. And I got there and got up. But the night's not over yet, though, because the two girls there. And this is an L move by me. And I still admit it till this day. Oh, this is one of the worst no. things I've ever done in my life. What did you do? So my my cousin, he had a crush on one of them, right? Okay. And they took us back home. Um, we snuck back in, and then the girl was now by herself, and she left. And then she started. She added me on Snapchat, all that, and we started talking. She picked me up one night when it was just me and not my cousin. No, no, I know where yeah. this is going. No. Yeah yeah you sick fuck <laughs> it, it is so wrong with me I, he doesn't care anymore but i still feel bad about it till this day because that's just like it's breaking bro code and it's also like that's your cousin too that like has a crush on this girl it was it, it was a very low moment like don't get me wrong it didn't feel like a low moment at the time but after reality set in it was just not a good look at all even lower than being the reviewer. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad. I, I'm. I still. Now, now, whenever I go over to visit my cousin, he has friends over. I'm known as that guy now. That stole your because, cousin's crush. Well, this girl had a reputation. All right. Uh, like she's one of those girls. Yeah. So she wasn't ugly by any means, but mid all right you you broke the bro code for mid uh, dude okay i'm sorry but when you partake of beverages mid doesn't look like mid okay <laughs> it looks like it looks like a solid 9.5 so in my mind i scored that night <sighs> i've never felt so disappointed in you <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I hated myself too after that for a while. It was bad, but he he was really chill about it though. My cousin was he didn't he didn't care much for it uh, just because of the fact it was like a crush. You know, it wasn't like he's been seeing. It would have been a whole different story if he was like dating or seeing the girl. You know, 
That'd um, be even. That'd be even worse. That'd be so fucked up. Yeah, that would have been awful. I <sighs> can't excuse you for partaking in beverages. Yeah, the the partaking in beverages does not work anymore when it goes that far. I would say the most recent time that I have partaken in beverages to the point where things start looking funny, I would say it was about three or four months ago. And basically enjoying my retirement, right? Uh, Naturally. So uh, my buddy, uh, this happened here. So my cousin is not involved in this one. Don't worry, I didn't score with one of his crushes or anything he we go over to this guy's house i never met the guy before but he's my buddy's buddy so he's my buddy right that's how the rule works we get there and we uh partaketh of beverages right Mm -hmm. but we also partaketh in partaketh (laughs) (laughs) we we partaketh in the green leaf and I'm not experienced with the weed killer. All right. The yard trimmings. So, <laughs> so I'm now getting as what they call a good mix of both. Like, uh, it's called cross something, but I forgot what they called it. Um, you shouldn't be mixing those. No, you shouldn't, especially when you don't have experience with one of them. Yeah, and you can't be on. You can't be indulging in beverages and uh, taking in well, the sweet green <laughs> leaf <laughs> at the same time. Yeah, and here was the problem. I told my parents where I was at, but I didn't tell them that I was sleeping over or anything. Obviously, there's some uh, people of the different gender at this uh, little get together. Um, okay. And so at first I thought this like mix was really cool. Like everything's, you know, spinning. It's, I'm all having a jolly time. Like my flirt game with women just went up plus 10. And (laughs) at least I that, but I could probably go back to that, ask one of those girls and they would probably be like, please don't talk to me again. Um, you in the face. This is yeah, movie. but then I started to realize it wasn't going away, and that's when I kind of started to like flip out a little bit because it was kind of just getting worse and worse. Oh, uh... and I got sick. I got sick. I, I made it to the bathroom. I closed the door. I made sure nobody saw it because you don't want to be that guy at the party that gets sick. You know, you don't want to be that guy because that's that's the loser. All right, that's not the cool kid. That's okay, the, that's the little bitch. Exactly. No, and I don't want to be known as a little bitch. So, you know, I I relieve myself in the bathroom, and okay, that's not a, that. <laughs> that looks that, that didn't sound like what you meant it was. <laughs> but and then little did I know, I passed out on the bathroom floor. Aww. Keep in mind, my parents don't know that I'm sleeping over there. I wake up to my buddy shaking my shoulder, saying, dude, wake up. Your parents are in the driveway. No. Oh, fuck. I can't tell you how quick I sobered up. I got up so fucking quick. And uh, so obviously I slept some of this beautiful uh, beverages and weed killers. Uh, I slept some of it off. So, you know, I wasn't as bad as I was before I fell asleep. And I start, you know, walking over to the car. And let me keep in mind, this is how my parents are. My dad is the one that will think it's funny. And my mom is the one that will beat the shit out of me. So, (laughs) (laughs) so I get in the car, sit in the back seat, and I'm just, like, laying back like this and getting ready for the lecture I'm about to get and my mom she's like she's thinking i'm doing like heroin or cocaine or something like something really bad she's yeah she's jumping to like mm-hmm. is it defcon 4 or 1 whatever the fuck yeah. the highest one yeah is. <laughs> and, and my dad's like no and he's just drunk and uh so we're driving back home and my, my mom's the one driving so she's pissed 
and she's driving like his need for speed. Keep in mind, I just got done being sick. Last thing I need is my mom whipping the car around. Like a Cedar Point roller coaster. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. And I felt myself getting sick again. And I'm like, listen, I'm telling myself in my head right now, I'm like, listen, man, you're almost home. You're going to get sick. Just go to the bathroom, but don't let your parents see you throw up or else you're going to give it all away, right? Like, so, what do you mean, give it all away? Like you, like, like you already like, weren't caught. In my in my head, I'm playing this off cool, okay. But I did ask my dad like a couple of days after that happened. I was like, "Could you tell?" And he was like, "Dude, how could you not tell?" So obviously, <laughs> I wasn't playing it off well. Moron. <laughs> <laughs> but but in my head, I'm like, "Oh, they don't expect a thing." We park in the garage. I open the door and throw up on the garage door, uh, the garage floor. And my dad looks at me, he was like, you're almost there, buddy. And I was like, all right. But that's that's the most recent story of uh, beverages and partaketh that I have uh, done recently. I think my biggest question out of that story is, why did you think that you were going to get away with that? <laughs> like, I know <laughs> you had two of, like, the most recognizable smells <laughs> that night. And you thought you were going to get well, away okay. with that? I Hang on, there, okay, there is an exception here, though. When I say we partaketh in the weed killer, it was the mechanical form of it. Still. Well, okay, that's a little better than... Well, yeah, so it but, doesn't... But the, the smell indulging in beverages, that smell is going to stick on you. If I breathe. Which you have to, because you're, <laughs> you're a human, you got to breathe. <laughs> Again, I don't understand how you thought you were going to get away with this. <laughs> Dude, listen, okay, I'm... And the worst part is, I mean, it was only three or four months ago. I was just about to say I was stupid back then, but it, it was wasn't that long months ago. ago. You just stupid. So, yeah, and so uh, I'm, I'm not the... Growing up, I've been very street smart, not book smart. Uh, but That's your street in, smart? <laughs> but in some scenarios, my street smart does not show up. I don't know. I don't know if I've told you this or not, but I I've indulged in beverages. Uh, you're 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 of age. I think you can say. I think, it. Yeah, I was like, I've gotten drunk <laughs> twice in my life. I've I've seen a lot of funny shit happen with people who are drunk around me, but like, I've been drunk two times. The first one was shortly after we did that Stein cast. It was like a month or so after that. I believe. Wow, my podcast was that bad? <laughs> <laughs> no, my brother, my older brother and I, we uh, decided to take a trip back up to my apartment here. To, for, mm -hmm. for reference, my apartment's like two hours away from my childhood home. So in All the right. summer, we used to always go back and we would hang out at the childhood home for the summer. So my brother and I, we decided to come up to the apartment for a weekend because we're in a college town. So we can do whatever the fuck we want here. The first night was fine. We were sitting on the couch drinking a little moonshine and watching Beavis and Butthead <laughs> on Paramount Plus. Which, by the was way, that the, shit's Beavis so, and Butthead? Yeah. Or like, was it the old one? The new one. And it's it, like, that shit's still funny. <laughs> of course, yeah. I was like, I hope it's not ass. And then I saw it and it was great. Mm -hmm. The second day is where everything falls to hell. Okay. We start out the day, we drive up to we drive up to a lake which is about an hour away and we drove up to a place that's called, like it was a distillery that was up there my uh, girlfriend at the time like she worked at that distillery mm -hmm. day is still pretty fresh in our minds yeah so we did that we had our fun oh and my uh my brother <laughs> his dumb ass thought we were going to a dispensary <laughs> So when I told him we pulled up to the distillery, he was like, what the hell is this place? And I was like, it's the distillery. <laughs> he's like, this is like, where's the weed? I was like, are you stupid? <laughs> I was like, you did not think we were driving an hour to go to a dispensary. <laughs> we could have stayed. We could have stayed where we were at to go to one of those. Yeah, really. But anyway, we drive back to the apartment and everything. And then we decided to go out for drinks and everything that night. My girlfriend was supposed to meet us later that night, and that was the plan. We were all three going to start drinking together, right? Yeah. So my brother and I go out. We go to this Mexican restaurant that's downtown. And Mexican restaurants, you got to get these big-ass margaritas. And him and I both got these, like, giant frozen margaritas. 
<laughs> about the same size as that Gatorade water bottle I was telling you about earlier. Is this? So him and I, we have our big ass burritos. We finish out our margaritas, and then we walk over to get some frozen alcoholic slushies. Oh, that sounds good. Then, like those were probably the best part of the night. Like those were really good. Then we drive back to the apartment afterwards. At this point, I like I had like a little feeling. Then again, I've never been at that point. I've never been drunk, so I had mm -hmm. I had no comparison going into this. We get to the apartment and I get that bottle of moonshine that we've hardly touched. <laughs> all three of us, my I have two brothers, so all three of us, we all have our own bottles of moonshine. His was a, I want to say <laughs> like an apple combination. So he like an apple moonshine. I had a vanilla moonshine, which that is sounds a good. Shitty choice. <laughs> really, vanilla? Was, you would think like that's what I thought. Like you would think it would be good, right? Yeah. Wrong. You are dead ass wrong. Wow. That is like straight up hand sanitizer. Do not drink that. <laughs> All right. You know what? You learn something new every day, and I will keep this in mind when I become of age. <laughs> Coming of age. <laughs> so. So anyway, the night begins. The night goes again, and we start getting a little, start getting a little drunk, with that bottle of moonshine. Keep it, We were supposed to go out later in the day too, so keep that in mind as I go along with this. All right. And we get to our first cup of uh, moonshine. My combination is a half lemonade, half moonshine combination. So there's a lot of alcohol in this cup. <laughs> of course. My brother has the same type of thing, and him and I are egging each other on the whole time. We turn on Dirty Grandpa, that uh, Zac Efron, <laughs> Robert De Niro movie, and he goes, let's, let's drink every time Zac Efron's on screen. I'm like, he's the main fucking character. Yeah, that's really, that's really fucking stupid. I was like, that's how you get alcohol poisoning, and we still did it anyway. We were <laughs> that's, that's, like, that's like saying, <laughs> watching the movie Cars and drink every time you see a car. God, that would have been even worse. But anyway, we did the drinking game, and it was about less than half an hour. Three cups of that half lemonade, half moonshine later, and I'm starting to finally feel it. But I was having it at such a quick pace. Oh, I didn't pace myself at all because I didn't know how. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't know how to pace myself. So I stood up, vomited right in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> And then I kept vomiting all the way to my own bathroom. And I, there's two bathrooms in the apartment. There's one that's close to us that was near the couch. And the other one was in my room, which is a little farther away. And my dumbass walks to the one that's near my room rather than the close one. Because I was like, I don't want to throw up in his toilet. It's not mine. Yeah, of course. You, you, you're being nice. So I throw up again two more times before I get to the bathroom on my own carpet and my front, <laughs> my front door area. Oh god! And like it all hits you at once. Yeah, and my brother's mm -hmm. laughing at me. He's he's out of his mind at this point. He's not like <laughs> he's got a higher tolerance than I do, but he's also like drunk as fuck. But then I get a call from my girlfriend, who was supposed to meet us. She's, oh god! She was, she was at the lake working, so she had to drive an hour to meet us. And all she hears on the phone is, "I'm so fucking drunk," <laughs> <laughs> and my brother's still laughing at me in the background. And she was pissed that night because she just got oh, off a God. long ass shit. She was hoping to have some fun. And yeah. then she has to deal with your drunk ass. And I feel, yeah, like this is, that's probably the worst I felt in a long time. Like just not only like mentally, but like physically. Physically mm -hmm. it was fucking horrendous. But like mentally, I felt so bad for her. I kept saying, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Dude, that's... <sighs> That, that shit the the mixed drinks are the most dangerous ones just because they especially if you get one that tastes good and you can just sip on it next thing you know it just hits you all at once and you're done that my drink didn't even taste good like it was a horrible combination the lemonade help did not help at all the rest of the night happens i'm passed out at like 10 o'clock at night this is all before midnight <laughs> jesus bro and I was just wrapped up, and I felt I like passed out, and I kept throwing up into a trash can next to me. Oh my god! And apparently, so I woke up at like six a.m. the next day. She had like oh. she had like cleaned up a lot of it, which I also felt super terrible for. I was like, I don't want you to clean that shit up, but like she couldn't, she didn't want to just leave it there. 
I woke up, I woke up like fully ready to clean everything up. I was like trying to be a changed man <laughs> in the last eight hours that I had. Push up real quick. And I went out there to go clean, and it was all cleaned up for me, so I felt even worse. Uh, I, it I just keeps the, getting worse. I cleaned up the bathroom, though. Like, she didn't touch that, so I was like, okay, let me clean that up. So I cleaned up the bathroom. Yeah. I, I couldn't even drive home. I had my, my older brother, I had him drive my car, because we took my car. I had mm-hmm. him take my car back, and my girlfriend drove me home. And we were supposed to have, like, family over that day back oh. two hours later so i came i came over hung over as fuck <laughs> walked in walked into my family who all knew what was happening at this point <laughs> and i just got roasted for like five hours oh, yeah. by them but i do got some sick ass stories about some drunk idiots <laughs> the best one the best one came my freshman year i had this guy we'll call him jack I had this guy named Jack. He was one of the guys who lived on my floor. They were all drinking and I wasn't because I didn't, I just didn't drink at the time. So I just watched everybody <laughs> get out of their minds. Yeah. And Jack, he, he's like a skinny, like he's a tall, skinny kid. One okay. Of the, one of those types of guys. Oh. And they get, the, he gets this bright idea to like go jump in the fountain outside and it's like 30 mm. degrees. So he goes outside and he goes, he chickens out of jumping into the, uh, fountain but then somebody brings up the idea of bringing a taser so wait, I had like, wait. <laughs> yeah it escalates pretty quickly here <laughs> yeah it's, that, that went uh, south really quick i was not expecting this turn so somebody brought had like this bright idea to like bring out their taser and show it off and, and jack's jack was like hey i want to try that <laughs> <laughs> and we I just looked at him funny and he just turned and they're like, okay, and they like tased him and he was he just fell to the ground <laughs> fell to the ground outside. <laughs> it just it, like because of course he did. He got fucking he got tased. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's... <laughs> We walked we walked back to the dorm and he we were we were on like the seventh floor, so he had to come up and the rest of the night he's just sitting in a corner bragging about how he got tased. <laughs> yeah, it's something really cool to brag about. But he's like, he's also super drunk, so everything's like freaking him out too. Somebody lifted up an empty bottle, and he goes and, and he like high <laughs> hands over his face and shit. He's like, no, 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 don't hurt me. <laughs> oh, dude, I I would have fucked with him so bad if he got scared that easily. I was thinking, I was thinking about it so much. I didn't know him that well, so I was like, I'm not messing with him. Yeah. The girl who, the girl was there. She knew him well, so she was like fucking around with him. Uh, there's only been one time where I felt bad for partaking in beverages, and this girlfriend at the time, I, in front of her parents, dude. Um. Fucking style. <laughs> <laughs> so, my parents and her parents are chilling out at my house uh we have a little bonfire thing set up in the backyard you know i'm beveraging right now i wasn't it's dangerous when i do that and i'm in like a conversation with someone that i enjoy talking to because i completely forget that i'm just like sipping on it at this point didn't even realize it and then once again hit me all at once and i'm like okay this ain't good her parents are right there now keep in mind this is about pretty deep into our relationship so her parents already like me yada 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 um at least i thought they did or i don't know but <laughs> so um, they, li- they liked you to a certain point probably. yeah yeah and so you know i'm like i'm leaning back in my chair like this like head up in the air and my sister's in town when this is going on too and she notices it, uh, and she, like, taps me so she's like, yo, uh, you good? And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know, I'm, I'm chilling. This is the first time my sister has ever seen me partake in beverage before. Mm-hmm. So she thought I was just joking, acting like that. Um, little did she know I have a little bit of experience under my belt. And then I got up quick because I felt myself about to get sick. Dude, I run over inside bathroom get sick and then i'm like okay well they're they're outside i'm in here getting sick 
her parents won't see this obviously because they're outside so i think i'm chilling oh okay, okay so this is but this is of olivia course. stein time again who's <laughs> but, but of course my mom had to be my biggest op in this scenario and bring my girlfriend's mom into the house with her to show her something and as they're walking over because my mom wanted to show her something in her room something she got i don't know what it was but when you walk to my parents' room, you walk past the bathroom. I left the door open, and Aww. the first thing that they see is just me over the toilet. And I'm like, oh, guys, you know, like, how you doing? Now, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my girlfriend's mom was really cool, okay? Like, she was really half the reason why I dated this girl for as long as I did. But, um, she, she was a... Uh, a nurse like uh, so she was you know she knew what to do she was you know help me out and stuff and then my girlfriend walks in because you know it's it's been a while it's been like an hour so she's like wondering what's going on and there's still a video of it she asked where i'm at and uh, my mom said in bed and she goes into my room and she looks at me like how i'm sleeping dude i'm sleeping in fucking Doggy style, doggy like, style, <laughs> ass, ass up in the air and everything. And she so she showed me that video the next day. And I'm like, there's no fucking way. And just this was the first time I ever done that and didn't remember what happened. This was her being a very good girlfriend here. She you know she laid down with me. She was you know making sure I was okay. And but then she started putting filters on my face on Snapchat. That she got the strap on. <laughs> okay, <no. laughs> but no, she. <laughs> so there was a bottle of water on the nightstand. Me and her laying down, mm -hmm. and she's she put this filter on me, and I'm like, I think it's the funniest shit apparently because I'm laughing my ass off in the video, and then <laughs> word for word, I reach over, grab the water bottle, and I said. I got to stay hydrated and I'm drinking my water because I'm drunk. <laughs> and, dude, she was laughing so hard. And, oh, dude, it, it was just, uh, it's weird when you don't remember what happened the night before and someone took videos of it because it's, it's a weird feeling because I don't remember this at all. Now that we're on the topic of this uh, ex girlfriend of mine, mm -hmm. there's and I thought about it this morning and it was just the craziest thing. It has nothing to do with the drinking or nothing, but it was so literally last year. So my senior year of high school, right? Right. Uh, we're getting ready for a homecoming game. Remember? So she was a cheerleader. I was a football player. Typical fucking high school relationship. Right. Oh. And yeah, really basic. And so it's a pep rally in the main gym. Me and all the football guys, you know, are sitting on the bleachers. The cheerleaders are doing their dance. And then I realized something wrong. So I was watching my girlfriend. They do her, they were all dancing stuff. And then she passed out in the middle of the gym. She was not very good with uh, breathing. Like, she always carried an inhaler around. I think she had some... It wasn't asthma, but she had something else wrong with her. I don't know what it was. Okay. She forgot it that day, which caused her to pass out mid dance routine in front of the entire school. May I add, the main gym was packed. She drops to the floor, sounds like a brick hit a fucking wall, right? And everybody looks at me when it happens. I'm like, okay, just because I'm her boyfriend doesn't mean I'm a fucking doctor, you know? So he's still gonna rush to help her. So and that's what I did. I I was a great boyfriend in this moment. I got up and I I just like looked at her. <laughs> I got up and I was like staring over her lifeless body right now. But <laughs> no, it's I, I looked down, I'm like, um I asked one of her friends that was also a trailer because she was standing there too checking out. I was like, check her bag, she see if she has her inhaler. She said she didn't have it. So I actually pulled a very uh, goat tier move and just picked her up off the floor and just carried her off to the nurse's office. I this is fucked up, okay? Okay. <laughs> so dropped her off at the nurse's office, told the nurse good luck and left. And uh, 
What? I go I go into the back into the main gym. I open the door and even though like the principal's talking about the football game coming up and stuff and what the theme is, everybody in the main gym just looks at me. You know, everybody's wondering like how she's doing and stuff, and I just hit the gritty. You did not. I did. I don't believe you. I swear. <laughs> I, think. I think you're full of shit. <laughs> Well, because here, here was my thought here. To take the embarrassment off of her, I was going to embarrass myself. Okay, th- so, what? <laughs> so, so I hit the gritty. So your, your idea to get the attention away from the person who passed out in front of the entire school was to hit the gritty. No, I, I literally walked into the main gym. Everybody was looking at me and I was like, yo, what up, guys? And squeak, squeak, squeak. Like in the gritty and shit. Why? And then, I don't know. I don't know. It just, it was the first thing that popped into my head and I just did it. And did it when work? she, it, it did. Uh, nobody gave a shit about her. So, um, no, <laughs> kidding. <laughs> nobody nobody um, fucking cared anymore. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, the, after the pep ride was over, we go to our fourth period class and, uh, it was culinary and me and my culinary teacher are super cool. She knew I was dating this girl. She was, she was like, is she okay? I'm like, I don't know. I just dropped her off at the nurse's office and said, good luck. And uh, she's like, well, do, do you want to go see her? And I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? So, I mean, like, it's a reason to skip class, right? So I, you know, go to the nurse's office. Her and a bunch of the other, uh, her close friends are there. And I'm like, uh, you're alive. So that's good. Um, Jesus Christ. I'm I'm not good at talking in serious situations at all. And she was like, Yeah, I just forgot the inhaler and all that and then she looked at me and she was like, Do you wanna tell me about this gritty thing? <laughs> uh, and I was like I was like I-, I told her I think you hit your head too hard. Yeah, there was what are you talking about? Gritty? <laughs> Didn't happen. What? I was like, No, I and I'm looking at things. Yeah, I'm like looking at her friends and shit. Like, I'm like, oh, you bastards definitely told her. Um, but yeah, that was like just such a weird moment because, like, it was like a weird adrenaline rush when I saw her hit the ground because I'm like thinking the worst right now, right? Like, I'm like, bro, did she just fucking die in the middle of the gym floor right now? So I, I got up so quick and I'm wondering because the whole school was there except for the nurse the only person that needed to actually be there at that time and she was on a smoke break or something yeah she fucking had a beer so luckily though she she was only like 80 pounds so it wasn't very hard to carry her but uh definitely uh, an interest you should have saw the nurse's face when i just walked in here with this fucking girl over my shoulders it, you didn't even carry you didn't even carry her like in the movies how they like carry him no. up front you carried her no, on, like I, a fireman's carry type of thing I gave her like the uh, so like I so I grabbed so okay so she this is how she was passed out she was passed out back on the floor right yeah so now that I thought about it maybe I could not like it was in the movies that might have been a little bit easier but instead I just grabbed her by the waist lift her up and like just threw her like on my right shoulder so you so basically like a sack of potatoes pretty much <laughs> I, I just wanted to make sure that ass was in my face all right. Well, to close out this podcast, we've gone a little over time, but we still should answer these questions that were sent in. Of course. We got a lot of questions to get through, so we'll try to get through them. Back to rec room wrestling. They yes, they are all rec room wrestling. <laughs> so let's start with Alex. For there's a couple. There's only three people who sent in questions. So Alex, I'll just read all Alex's first. Okay. Alex Frost. He wrote, "Do you still think you're better than Ruby?" This goes back to what i was saying about like your five star ratings Mm -hmm. before he got that second five star match i would say there was a good gap between us now that he has that second five star match the gap is definitely closed uh up a little bit just due to the fact that it's so hard to say who's better between me and Ruby just because we impacted Rec Room Wrestling in two different ways. You know, I did it due to uh, my character, the fans, every, being the people's champ, you know. And 
Ruby did it by making one of, if not the best company in record wrestling. You know, we both kind of took two different paths. Both have your accolades to show for it, too. Yes, it, it's so hard to say who's better, but obviously, since I'm me, I'm still going to say I'm better than Ruby, but it, it's close. It, it Honestly, I wouldn't be upset if someone said that Ruby's better than me because there there is a huge argument there, definitely. Yeah, those arguments, I kind of just leave those arguments up to other people at this point when it comes, like, so, like, I guess I don't. I wouldn't call it a commentary argument <laughs> because <laughs> to me, I don't think there's any argument anymore. But it used to be like Mike O'Phone and me, and I was just like, "Yeah, it's up to you guys. You have you have your own preferences. If you like someone else's voice more, makes sense." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the other question Alex had is regarding oh. Dawson. Oh, and this one is: Do you ever regret passing the torch to Dawson? <laughs> I think uh, the only regret I have is doing it when I did. And because, you know, when you come back from retirement after giving somebody the torch, it kind of gives the torch a little bit less meaning to it. But other than that, no, there's uh, nobody else that I would have rather gave it to, to be honest. See what Dawson has done in the span that I was gone. Yeah, well, speaking of Dawson, the next question is going to be from Rise. And mm-hmm. he asks a question. This is kind of related to that same event. And he says, why did you decide to pass the torch to Dawson? Okay, so there was actually one person I had in mind. And only really Dawson knows this. I was actually going to pass it down to Z-Man. Really? I was. Um, and then things got interesting. Uh, Z-Man kind of became a different character uh he wasn't the guy i thought he was um you know z-man i still consider him a friend it it just he seemed to just get a little bit out of control i guess at some points and that's just not someone uh, i wanted uh passing the torch down to i originally passed it to uh dawson because at first i won't even lie i hated dawson so much (laughs) um i hated this Cody Rhodes gimmick he had and honestly it pissed me off to the point where I felt bad for him so I trained him and taught him all this shit and then I realized he caught up to it really quick like quicker than I ever could have when I first started if you compare me the first five months into my career versus Dawson the first five months into his career he's 10 times better than me Uh, he always wanted to learn he never complained about anything and he was just a nice dude. So, yeah, very I, genuine. Yeah, like humble guys. And I was like, yeah, this is definitely someone that I can have represent this time time name. Like, this is someone that I can see passing the torch down to. It was crazy how much I meant to him because you go back to recordings, dude, the dude was crying. <laughs> Ew, yeah, it was a, for a lot of people, that was a sad day. And for me, it was just a, what the, like, what the fuck? Why are you crying? <laughs> it's a, uh, it was one once i saw how he reacted to it i was like i know i picked the right person for it uh it's no 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 one else would react to that way and it showed up it was a sweet him. moment it was and then i came back and completely fucking ruined it but <laughs> so the next one so rise has two more questions and then i got a couple more after that so he right. rise asks again how do you feel about ruby being cracked on the sticks I'm not exactly sure what this question's asking. <laughs> <laughs> I figured uh, I'd leave that interpretation up to you. Uh, cracked on the stick. Um, I think that's Rise trying to say I was to feel that Ruby's better than me now. Um, I feel like that. I feel like that's how I'm gonna uh, think of it that way. Um, yeah, honestly, I have no clue how to interpret that question. <laughs> I thought it was like a video game question. <laughs> it's okay here's the thing about record wrestling right now if you work mainly for roh there's a good chance you're gonna think ruby's the goat and if you work mainly for wrw there's a really high chance you think i'm the goat it's kind of divided and i think that's another problem with record wrestling as well yeah it's i've, I've just realized that roh thinks ruby's the goat and wrw thinks i am so as long as we got our 
50-50. I'm, I'm cool with that. It shouldn't, yeah, it shouldn't be like a, there, there should be some competition, I guess, but like, in my eyes, let it, let it just happen. You guys don't have to feed into it. No, and like they'll, it, they'll do it for you, and as long as you like remind them, don't take it too seriously. I think, yeah, I think it's at least fun. It's a little fun little game between you two. People start to talk shit and say stuff about it being better. I just go back to the fact that none of this is gonna matter. So, yeah, that's a fair that's a fair assumption. <laughs> yeah. So, Rise's final question, also relating to Rec Room Wrestling, Shocker is who do you think changed Rec Room Wrestling the most? See, I saw this question, and I still can't think of an answer. Um, you, you gotta, there's so many people you can name. And honestly, you would have to start thinking of big company owners first, because they're the ones that made the fucking company, you know? Yeah. Like, they're the ones that started it. So, you know, you gotta go, you gotta go all the way back to maybe even Scratch, you know, yeah, um, I've, I've been thinking about this question too. It's hard to, cause there's a lot of points that I could say there's, there's been like a couple of different, I guess, I, I guess eras. That's, I don't that, know if that's the right word. No, like, that's exactly what I was yeah. like, you got the RZW area with scratch and all that. And then you would have, uh, the three pillars we, era. Uh, there was a huge feud between the OG WRW and RCW. And that's when I start getting into the picture of Rec Room Wrestling. That was like when I was newer. Um, and then you have the DPW era. And that's when ROH started to show up too a little bit later on after that. So now you have like the um, WRW, DBCW and ROH era. That's huge. And then you also have, you know, wrestler eras too. Like you have, you got to go probably as far as to say a scratch era at one point. Mm -hmm. um, then you would probably after scratch, I'm only saying this person just because he was my mentor. Like he was a person, uh, Michael Evans. Yeah, um, I could see that. And then after Michael Evans, it was probably me. And then after me, I think uh, we're going to be living in the Ruby era. Yeah, like I think Scratch was at first. Like he's kind of, he's the name I think of like when it comes to starting and like whether you like yeah. him or hate him. And a lot of people he's hate him. <laughs> yeah. Whether you like him or hate him, that name is going to stay around for that reason. Uh, selfishly, I put myself in there too as like without the reviews like that was a there was definitely a shift in like how people reacted and how people performed because of that that's something i've kind of grown to understand after the last after i retired the first <laughs> after i was supposed to hang everything up <laughs> <laughs> my bad Robert, like i kind of reflected on that and i thought like i pro i definitely played some sort of role in this uh i think of i think of when rocker and shay took over DPCW, As, I think of those two. I think of like the three pillars after that, like shortly after that. Who's changing it right now? I guess that's still up to. I guess I would have to say Ruby. I would say Ruby too. It's definitely Ruby and ROH. Other companies are trying right now. Like I'm seeing a bunch of different mm -hmm. ones rising up. Mm -hmm. so it's just they're all trying to take over. <laughs> well, it, it was yeah, really. It's I just remember when WRW came back. That's when I was like, this is my original spot. This is where I started it all. Um, So I was like, because originally I was the only known wrestler on that roster in WRW. I, pr I promised Goji, I was like, I'm going to make this company one of the best in Rec Room. Just because this is literally what made Stein Time. Like everybody who knows me now, it all started with WRW. This one's from Rocker. Uh, best feud in your eyes. So I saw this one, and before I answer it, I want you to answer. What do you think is my best feud? Okay, so there's there's two that come to mind. I think of I think of both of the Black Diamond storylines that you had. Mm -hmm. I gotta probably go over. I probably gotta go with Paragon, just because like 
that felt like an actual one-on-one story compared to like it was one-on-one with you and Mike for a bit but then Rock yeah. was involved and it became a three story then it came back to you guys like to me it seemed like the better story was the Paragon story going into Jackpot yeah and that's exactly how I would answer that question it was the first feud that I had in my career it was just so perfect. I mean, the cash-in was a great setup for it. Uh, it was so great. <laughs> it, it was incredible. It was a top moment in record wrestling history. Me and my and, phone sold the shit out of that. He, he did. And we had a chance to go up against each other in the elimination chamber at Locked Away. And, uh, of course, just me and Paragon, the final two standing in the chamber... And then I lose and then build up for even a bigger match at and I quit at Jackpot. Next question is favorite title reign, not just of yours. I mean ever with everyone. I wish you phrased that better, but what was your favorite title reign in a record room wrestling? Okay, so if I had to give a top three, mm-hmm. it would be me with the two world titles, Jackson Flash with his YouTube title. I would go as far as to say Mike Towers with his Black Diamond World title. Yeah, I think how I would answer this. I, I probably would put your double championship in there just because you did have a you had a big impact with that second run. I mm-hmm. wouldn't say it was the like the best because there's that's that's just it about your title runs. Your your chase to the title was always great, but once you had the title it kinda of fell a little flat. Mike Towers is my number one for sure. But I'm just trying to think of who I'd put like right below that. I've seen a lot of title reigns maybe wave but like i didn't see a lot of that title know it all his world title reign was all right but he also didn't show up much i was thinking of mr know it all's world title reign but again it, it didn't show up much uh i thought i was thinking of plasma's universal title reign yeah there's not a lot of good like that's just it like some people just don't know how to carry a title properly <laughs> like there's a lot of titles where i'm like do they really matter to me <laughs> Yeah. Maybe Jackson Flash. I guess I have to go with Jackson Flash by default. I just don't have anybody else I can think of. And then the final question from Rocker is, when is your next retirement? <laughs> Before I turn 20, I'm, I'm done after that. Like, because we talked about the first time I retired and about the personal stuff, you know. But now that I'll retire on my own, knowing I want to, that's when I know that I won't want to come back. But before we stop all this, got a question. All right. Go for it. Not in order. Okay. You're five record wrestlers of all time. <laughs> I knew someone was going to eventually ask this. Yeah. You know, you know I had to. And you know, I'm still not going to answer that. <laughs> I'm still. Uh-huh. And I'm One still, time. No. One. No. You're five. Nope. I will. I'm going to leave that to myself. Even like a top ten, like I, I gave that before. That things have definitely changed, so I'm not going to give it again. <laughs> Motherfucker, I've been on this shit for like almost three hours. You're going to answer my question. <laughs> it's been two. Thank you very much. Two Thank hours you. and fifteen minutes as of right now. But no, I like to leave that question up to everybody else. I don't like because I'll I'll have my own thoughts on it, and some days I'll have some people in there. Some days I won't. People's names come in and out. Top five wise. Some days I'll think of like so and so, and the next day they won't even be in the top five anymore. If you were to give a top five, would it all be current, or would you still add all time like like retired wrestlers too? I I could probably do separate lists for those, but again, they would all flip as well. For uh for like all time, that would be tricky. Like that, I think that's the list I keep thinking of. That's why it's so tricky, because I keep thinking of like, oh, they did this, this, and this, cool. This person did this, this, and this, and now they're in that spot. <laughs> like, like I would I would say, like, if I were to give, like, a top ten of all time, I would say only two of the people in the top ten are actually retired, but the rest are current. All I'm saying is, somebody did a top ten once, and I was number seven. I hadn't wrestled. <laughs> I was number seven on that list somehow, so big ups <laughs> yeah uh, if, if someone gave me a top 10 list and you were above me that's <laughs> we're gonna have some 
be mad with that road be mad <laughs> we're at the end of this podcast now we're we're basically done but i will leave the floor up to you is there anything at all that you want to promote anything you want to talk about anything at all that's going on in your life floor is yours i have a dream <laughs> not fucking with you but for uh, the rec room wrestlers that are uh, watching this um Stop being so fucking toxic, bro. It's a game, all right? I don't give a fuck how many championships you got, how many five-star matches you have. Um, Just uh, remember, no one's going to give a shit in a couple years, and it's not going to get you any bitches. So uh, just have fun, and have fun while you do it. And don't do it till you're 19 like me. Learn from our mistakes. Learn from our mistakes. Learn from your elders. All right. Don't don't have to go to a retirement home like us. And, and whatever you do, don't be the next reviewer. Just have Shep stay with it. Fuck no. <laughs> Fuck no. If somebody oh, doesn't can... take it over when I leave, there's no more reviews. That's it. It's done. Um, Rec room wrestling might become a better place. Good. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> it's all about building an audience. Absolutely. It's so funny. Anyway. That's going to be the end of this episode of the podcast. Stein, thank you once again for joining me today. Mm -hmm. For those of you who are new to this channel, go ahead and give us a subscribe if you enjoyed this. If you stayed around for two hours. <laughs> if this if this podcast even gets edited to two hours, I think I'll cut it down. But yeah, that's all I got. Uh, no, get the <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck. Go <laughs> st stealing my lines and shit. 